experiment to detect the presence of chloride ions in aqueous solution. In this series of experiments, we carry out tests to detect the presence of certain negative ions, anions, in dissolved in water. The first of these ions is the chloride ion, Cl-. Using a wash bottle of deionized water, fill a test tube to about one quarter of its capacity with deionized water. Add a small amount of the chloride salt. A few crystals are sufficient to the water. Shake the test tube to help the salt dissolve. A clear solution should be obtained. Using a clean dropper, add a few drops of silver nitrate solution, AgNO3, to the clear solution. Note that the clear solution in the test tube turns cloudy and a white solid material settles out of solution. The general name given to a material that settles out of solution is a precipitate. The insoluble material formed is called silver chloride and it forms when the silver ions from the silver nitrate combined with the chloride ions dissolved in water as shown by the equation on the screen. Thus, the cloudiness is observed because insoluble silver chloride is formed. To confirm that the white precipitate is silver chloride, add about a quarter of a test tube of dilute ammonia solution and shake gently. Silver chloride is soluble in dilute ammonia solution. Thus, the cloudiness disappears. We conclude from these results that the chloride ions are present in solution. Experiment. To detect the presence of sulfate ions, SO42- and sulfite ions, SO32- in aqueous solution. Using a wash bottle of deionized water, fill two test tubes to about one quarter of their capacity with deionized water. Add a small amount of the sulfate salt to the water in one test tube. Shake the test tube to help the salt dissolve. A clear solution should be obtained. Make up a solution of the sulfite salt in a similar fashion. Label each test tube. Using a clean dropper, add a few drops of barium chloride solution, BaCl2, to the clear solution in each test tube. Note that the clear solution in each test tube turns cloudy and a white solid material settles out of solution. The insoluble material formed is called barium sulfate or barium sulfite. These compounds are formed when the barium ions from the barium chloride solution combine with the sulfate ions and sulfite ions dissolved in the water. To distinguish between the barium sulfate and barium sulfite, add about a quarter of a test tube of dilute hydrochloric acid to each of the above test tubes and shake gently. Barium sulfate is insoluble in dilute hydrochloric acid. However, barium sulfite dissolves in dilute hydrochloric acid. Thus, the cloudiness disappears in the case of the sulfite ion and remains in the case of the sulfate ion. In conclusion, sulfate and sulfite ions are detected using barium chloride solution. 
They are distinguished from each other using dilute hydrochloric acid solution. Barium sulfate is insoluble in dilute hydrochloric acid, but barium sulfite is soluble. Experiment. To detect the presence of carbonate ions, CO3-2- and hydrogen carbonate ions, HCO3- in aqueous solution. Place a small amount of the carbonate salt in a boiling tube to a depth of about 1 cm. Insert a one hole stopper into the boiling tube and set up the apparatus as shown. Remove the one hole stopper, add about a quarter of a test tube of dilute hydrochloric acid to the carbonate salt in the boiling tube and quickly replace the rubber stopper. A brisk effervescent fizzing is observed as the acid comes in contact with the carbonate. The carbonate ions react with the acid to liberate carbon dioxide. To verify that this gas is carbon dioxide, bubble it through lime water. The lime water turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate chalk. Repeat the experiment using hydrogen carbonate salt instead of carbonate salt. As in the case of the carbonate, the hydrogen carbonate reacts with the acid to give off carbon dioxide. We have seen both a carbonate and a hydrogen carbonate react with dilute acids to give off carbon dioxide. Since both carbonates and hydrogen carbonates react in a similar way with dilute acids, we must have some method of distinguishing between the two ions. This is done using a solution containing magnesium ions, for example, magnesium sulfate. MgSO4. Add a small amount of the carbonate salt to about a quarter of a test tube of deionized water. Add about a quarter of a test tube of magnesium sulfate solution to the solution of the carbonate. Note the formation of a white precipitate of insoluble magnesium carbonate. However, if this test is repeated with the hydrogen carbonate salt, No precipitate is formed as magnesium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water. We conclude that the carbonate and hydrogen carbonate ions are detected using dilute acids. They are distinguished from each other using magnesium sulfate solution. The magnesium carbonate is insoluble in water, but magnesium hydrogen carbonate is soluble. Experiment. To detect the presence of nitrate ions, 
NO3- in aqueous solution. Since all nitrate salts are soluble in water, it is not possible to detect the presence of nitrate ion by a precipitation reaction. A special test called the brown ring test is used to detect the presence of the nitrate ion. Using a wash bottle of deionized water, fill a test tube to about one quarter of its capacity with deionized water. Add a small amount of the nitrate salt, a few crystals are sufficient to the water. Shake the test tube to help the salt dissolve. A clear solution should be obtained. Add the same quantity of freshly prepared iron 2-sulfate solution to the test tube. This step involves the use of concentrated sulfuric acid. Extreme care must be taken with this substance as it is highly corrosive. Using a dropper, pour about 3 cm cubed of concentrated sulfuric acid down the inside of the test tube. The test tube should be slanted as shown. Since the concentrated sulfuric acid is so dense, it settles to the bottom of the test tube and forms a layer beneath the mixture. Note that a brown ring is formed at the junction of the two layers. This brown ring is formed as a result of the nitrate ion being present and hence this test is the confirmatory test for the presence of the nitrate ion. As the chemical reactions involved are rather complicated, we need not concern ourselves with the details of these reactions. We conclude that the nitrate ions are present in a solution if a brown ring is formed when concentrated sulfuric acid is added to a mixture of the solution and a freshly prepared iron 2 sulfate solution. Experiment to detect the presence of phosphate ions in aqueous solution. Using a wash bottle of deionized water, fill a test tube to about one tenth of its capacity with deionized water. Using a spatula, add a small amount of the phosphate salt. A few crystals are sufficient to the water. Shake the test tube to help the salt dissolve. A clear solution should be obtained. Pour in ammonium molybdate solution until the test tube is about half full. Ammonium molybdate is a compound of molybdenum element number 42 in the periodic table. The chemical formula for ammonium molybdate is NH42MOO4. This step involves the use of concentrated nitric acid. Extreme care must be taken with this substance. Using a dropper, add 5 drops of concentrated nitric acid to the test tube. Place the test tube in warm water, about 60 degrees Celsius. Note the formation of a yellow precipitate. This yellow precipitate is a substance called ammonium phosphomolybdate. You are not required to know the equation for this reaction. We conclude from this experiment that phosphate ions are present in solution.